Ginny Aberly, the high school ELA instructional lead. And I'm here today bringing you two amazing high school teachers um, who are going to share with you some of the great strategies they use in their classroom. First up will be Emily Sales, who is an English teacher at Manual High School. And she's going to talk to you about some strategies that she has used during NTI to engage students with independent reading, but in a way that connects them and also connect standards. And then Rosie Bertles is an ESL teacher from Iroquois High School. And she is going to share with you something that she actually started before NTI began and is continuing it through there, um, through this time, in which students um, write their own story and then have different endings to the story. So um, some great engaging ways for students that can happen during NTI or in the regular classroom as well, whenever that happens. So I'm going to turn it over to Emily and she's going to share her strategies. Great, thank you. I am Emily Sales and I'm an English teacher at DuPont Manual High School. I teach mainly 11th and 12th grade. Just to give you a little background on my rationale for what I did. Um, first, what I did is I asked students to find an independent reading novel and just kind of evaluate why they chose it. I specifically asked my students to choose a novel from the canon of American literature because I teach a junior English class. Uh, but of course, that could be adapted really to any grade or content level, in my opinion. Um, for me as an English teacher, independent reading has always been a very strong cornerstone of my classroom um, because I feel like it gets students, gives students choice and gives them a way to engage. Um, so what I did is I created weekly projects that were based on different Kentucky academic reading standards. Uh, I wanted to create projects where students could take each of the standards and apply it both to their independent reading novel and also use it as a way to interpret the life around them right now using different forms of multimodal communication. By applying these standards to literature and life, I've seen, seen students create really meaningful connections to the universality of each standard. Um, so what they're learning is that standards are not just ways that we interpret literature, they're not just things that we have to learn, but there's something universal about these standards that are applicable to life as well, especially during this time. So for my first project, I wanted students to create a Google slideshow to explore how an author's description of setting helps to inform the mood of a work of literature. So first, students were asked to find passages from their independent reading novels where the author used descriptive detail to both inform the reader about the setting as well as the mood it creates. Students found pictures on the internet of what they felt looked like this setting that's described in their IR novels. And then they assigned a mood to it as well. For this particular example, my student is reading The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And as you can see, she found a really good paragraph that described the setting at the beginning of the book of the Victorian house and decided the mood was bleak, which I, I believe it is too. Uh, the next part of this uh, was taking this standard and applying it beyond independent reading and more into commentary uh, connections to life around them. So what I had students do was go around their house and take different pictures of various rooms in their house. And what they did with these pictures is they became the authors and wrote really strong descriptive paragraphs using details, figurative language, all of that good stuff that gives us uh, detail and mood. And then they decided on a mood that was created from this description. So as you can see in this particular student example, um, she took a picture of her bedroom, which is a very clean bedroom for a teenager and decided that the mood that was created was peaceful, which I agree with, it looks very peaceful to me. For my next project, we did characters in quarantine. So for this assignment, I wanted students to explore the nuances of characterization, but in a more flipped modern way. So what I did is I asked them to suppose that the characters were living in this quarantine of 2020 and had access to social media. So what would their characters be doing with their free time? Would they be cooking? Would they be laying around watching Netflix? What would they be doing? So students designed Instagram pages to demonstrate how these independent reading novel characters 
would be spending their time in isolation. Additionally, they had to then write an explanation using textual evidence from the book to kind of verify the choices that they made on their social media post. So you can see for this student example, the student was, is reading Little Women, Louisa May Alcott, of course. And what she's done is she's created an Instagram page for Little Women, for Joe March. Uh, she even included a quote down there in the Instagram feed. And she wrote a really good paragraph with textual evidence discussing why she makes the choices that she makes with Joe and why, why her character in the book would be fitting for this type of reaction in quarantine. Similarly, she also designed an Instagram post for Joe's younger sister, Beth. Um, those of you who might remember the book or the movie, Beth is more domestic, she's quieter. So the student said that she'd be doing housework and verified it with textual evidence from the book. My next project that I'm going to talk about today is a literary device soundtrack. And this was one that students were really excited by because they could, they could adapt this with music. So what students did was create a double-sided soundtrack for this assignment where side A were song choices based on their independent reading novel, and side B were song choices that focus on their life right now. I kind of asked them in the assignment, what would be the soundtrack to your life right now for side B? However, each side was to have five songs that reflected different literary devices. So I did mood, figurative language, theme, tone, conflict, but of course, that can be adapted to many different types of literary devices. You could even just do one for figurative language. There's a lot of possibilities with that to adapt it into your own classroom. So students created the soundtrack and you can see here is another piece of student example work. Um, this particular student is reading In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. And so for the side A, which is about the book, but has to do with figurative language, she chooses a song that she says is rich in figurative language because it's talking about getting over the guilt and the four walls is metaphorical for guilty conscience. Um, and then similarly, she took the same standard of figurative language and applied it to her life right now. She chose a song but Lost by Frank Ocean and talked about the vivid metaphor of losing yourself in the song. Also, for theme, I wanted to show you some of her examples. Again, this is the same one who reading in Cold Blood. She talks about the theme of, in the book of mental illness and chooses a song that she believes kind of speaks to that theme of mental illness in Cold Blood. And then, of course, side B deals with theme as well. But what is the theme to her life right now? And she uses the song Girl, which she says is, has empowering themes about picking yourself up and working things out and getting through the tough times. So I just wanted to talk briefly about some challenges that I've um, experienced and I've overcome some of them, still working on others. One challenge that uh, has been presented to me is maintaining Google Meets with online class sessions. A lot of my students are actually working jobs right now. Some of them are working close to full time in grocery stores. So having regular scheduled Google Meets they can't always make those times and some of them don't have the access to technology. So what I've been doing is recording meetings and posting those to Google Classroom for students who wanna go back and review the lesson. Another challenge is designing lessons that aren't new material, but review of previously taught standards. As an English teacher, this gives us a really good time to kind of loop through those standards that we've been looping through for years. Um, and using those essential reading standards as a foundational foundation for all my assignments uh, gave me a good way to kind of review but not teach something new. Uh, also allowing students to select their own independent reading novel. That way the, the book was not necessarily coming from me, but something that they could find in their house. I encourage them to use the free Audible um, subscription that Audible was offering to students. And finally, student engagement has, you know, been challenging through NTI. Again, giving students the choice for independent reading novels really helps get them more engaged. We are more invested in what we do when we have some autonomy and choice over what we read. Uh, similarly, designing lessons that encourage creativity and utilize multiple mediums and modalities of communication has really helped engage them. My students are very used to writing papers, reader response, all of that good stuff that English teachers do. So 
these projects have given them a more creative way to insert themselves through their work. And then finally, giving students the opportunity to interpret this kind of crazy time period in a meaningful and safe way has really proved to be effective in student engagement. By having that third piece where students take the standards and apply it to their own life, they are so much more engaged in what they do. And they really, from the feedback I've been getting, they really appreciate having that kind of safe space to be able to interpret the world around them. Um, so that's what I have. If in case anybody has any questions or comments, uh, this is my contact information. You can reach out to me there. And thank you very much for your time. I'll turn that back over to Jenny. Emily, I'd just like to say that I love that music lesson. Like I would like to do that lesson right now. So I think that's great that you kind of met the kids at one of their interests and tied it into the standards. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I like about these lessons too. They really connect to kids um, in a way that may not seem like they're really learning, but because it's also connected to standards and they're having to connect that, like it, it is learning for them. It's learning in a book, but it's also learning from their surroundings. And we know that text is not just words on a page. So love that. Um, and the student choice that's in there. So that theme of student choice is gonna carry through to Rosie and she is going to share um, her activity where students have choice, but it's also really a great collaborative activity where kids can collaborate on um, online platforms, which we're all really learning how to do these days. So Rosie, I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right, thank you. Sorry, I shared my screen a little bit too early, but um, <laughs> here it is. So yes, I'm Rosie Bertels. I teach ESL English at Iroquois High School. And um, I've been doing this uh, particular writing project with my students for a couple of years. It just happened to fall that we were doing it this semester. So if you're familiar with the Choose Your Own Adventure books, students or actually readers get to choose where they go in their story next. And so I got the idea of, um, making that into a writing project for my sophomore English students. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is um, an example from last year of a finished product. The students this year are actually in the finalized um, processes of their project. So I'll show you one in a minute. Um, they're just about done and ready to present. But I wanted to show you what the final product of this is. So these were two students that got together what I had them do was at first they um, they collaborated on a Google Doc in classroom, which they could do that over the internet also on a Google Doc, um, but they came up with their own original story. So they wrote two pages, um, double spaced in Times New Roman, 12 font. They thought I was killing them, um, but they wrote a story. They started out the beginning of the story. And once the beginning of their story was finished, I had them make a copy of the document so that if um, their partner accidentally did something with a story that was finished, they would still have an accurate copy of the story that they had written. And then they went ahead and wrote one middle and two endings for their story. So they're creating the story as they went. And once the project was finished, we put it into this Google slide presentation and made the hyperlinks. And I'm gonna show you how we did that in just a moment. Uh, but right here, this is their title slide. So this is their joint story. The two of them wrote about sharks and we put that on these first four slides that the students put together. And then you see down here at the bottom, um, here are the options. So this is one student's middle path and it will branch off into two endings. And here's the other student's middle part of the story and it'll branch off into two endings. So they essentially have four different stories that they can read um, at the end of this project when it was finished. So I'm just gonna show you this one and more sharks. This is the middle part of their story. And then um, here we come to the end of the middle and the reader has a choice. Do we wanna know about the sharks attacking or do we wanna know what the sharks did under the water? So we're gonna choose sharks under the water and see they had the opportunity to put the picture on there to change the font, change the color of the font. So they're learning the technology as well as um, honing in on their writing skills. And what I found is that using technology made them much more engaged in the whole process and working with a partner and using technology 
made writing a whole lot more fun for them. So it was the most exciting thing just to look around the classroom and seeing everybody actively engaged in working on their project. Um, so here we come to the ending, the first ending of the story. And then I had the students go back to where the choices were. So they could start back again and go choose a different path and see where the story went from there. The last thing I have them do is do the final credits because just like in a movie, we want to give credit to the people who have written the story and thank our readers for, for reading through our story. So that's a finished product um, from last fall. I'm going to go back over here and, um, and I've created in here, you'll have access to this uh, slide deck. So if you click on here, it'll tell you how to create the hyperlinks. What I've done with the NTI, because um, I've done like Emily did, I have online class meetings um, every week and I record the class meeting and then post it. That way students can come and be a part of the class or they can watch the video. Um, or if they've forgotten something, they can stop the video and take it one step at a time. So this was a great resource. This is a really simple way to make um, explanation for the hyperlinks and then also how to insert the background pictures. But instead of taking the time to show you those right now, I'm just going to show you the snip. Of that uh, we'll see, real, if you don't mind real quick. So when you do click on those, does it go to like a doc with the directions or did you make a little uh, explanation video for the students? Those actually go right to YouTube um, for the story. So I explained in class what they would need to do. <clears throat> but my students are ESL students. So English is their second or third or fourth oh, language. Okay. So what I did was I found something that was just targeted for what I wanted them to do. And then also with YouTube, um, you can slow down the speech and put the captioning on so that it's accessible for them to figure out what's going on. Um, and what they need to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, great strategy. I love it. Thank you. Okay. So over here on, um, this is an explanation. I know uh, we have different levels of students. We teach different grade levels. Maybe you don't want to spend um, weeks at a time on a writing project. I had the ability to do that um, with my English classes. Uh, but if you want to just have your students work with the technology and write a shorter story, this is an option, just a demonstration of how you can do this. And this is that first video. So one day, a strange boy called Matt was exploring his attic. He saw an unusual box. So as a reader, if I want to open the box, I would click on that. If this was live, it would take me to slide number three, and I would find out where the story goes from there. If I decide I want to go back upstairs, then it would jump to slide number four and it would carry on the story from there. So you can see that this can be a really basic technology writing project or you can make it as complicated as you want, depending on the level of students you have and the ability for them to, um, to do this on a Chromebook or a device versus just being able to do it on a phone. So here, oh, I did not take these off. So excuse me for just a moment. I'm going to delete these things and show you how this works. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm going to actually change. Actually, I'm going to create a, um, a new slide here. Okay, so in order to put the background in, it's very easy. You just hit the background button here and you put choose an image. So normally I would write my story first, but I'm going to do that last because I got myself out of order. So I'm going to go to a Google Google image search. I'm going to do the story of Little Red Riding Hood. So I'm just going to put that in there. It's going to find me various pictures. I want this picture. Mm, no, you know what? I think I want this picture as my background. So you just click insert and then you click done. And there I have Little Red Riding Hood in the background. Most of us know how to do the text box, so I'm just going to make a very basic story here. Um, once upon a time, a girl went to visit her grandmother, and she saw a wolf. And now you, t you can't see those words. So what I've taught my students is they can go in here. I'm not going to make all the refinements just due to time. But here I can change it to white and I can change it to a larger font. So now my story is started. In order to create the hyperlinks, they simply need to go to insert shape. 
They can use any of these shapes. My students have chosen a scroll. They have chosen an arrow. You just pull it out this way. I'm going to put my text in there that says she runs away. I'm going to right click, put the link. We are on slide three right now. So I'm going to go to the next slide I can actually do um, for this one. Take that text off because I already did my text. Okay. And you can see. All right. I'm going to need to modify here. I am just going to put runs away in here. There's one little glitch that I have when I do this, and that is sometimes it does the text. So here we go again. Insert. We go to shape. I like to have the shapes the same on the page. This one's going to have the two options. So I'm going to right click, link, and this one is going to go to slide number six. Going to apply it. I'm going to put my words in there. And I'm going to say she, let's see, that one she ran away. This one she's going to hide. And then when I go to present, obviously these won't go to the next part of the story, but I just click run away and I come to that slide. And I click she hides. Hmm, looks like my hyperlink did, oh, not in presentation. There we go. Hide, she goes to that slide. So it's just as easy as that. It's um, one of the complications with NTI is that um, you can't point to your keyboard. Let me see, make sure my captions are back on. There we go. Um, you can't point to the keyboard and show the student what to do as far as learning the technology. Um, so what I've done is I've done private Google Meets with my students, and then I can share my screen and show them what they need to do. And the student, I have them share their screen, so they're learning that aspect of the technology and they're actually doing it themselves because I find like most students, they would rather I change their slides for them, but I'm trying to empower them to learn that they can do it on their own. Um, so that's been one of the difficulties. The other thing that I've learned with, um, with teaching and using technology is that we have to model being a lifelong learner. So it is okay that we don't know how to do everything. And um, we can empower them by saying, I'm not quite sure how to do that. Can you go and figure that out and then show me? That's what I've done in the classroom. But it's the same online. I've, I've taken the opportunity several times to tell my students, we're going to try something new today and see if it works well. And then they've helped me figure out how we can uh, learn well over the Internet. Uh, so the private sessions with students or small groups with them um, recording my meeting the thing I love about the Google Suite and JCPS's connection with Google is that both Google Docs and Google Slides give you the opportunity to comment and um, to guide students, um, the opportunity for them to collaborate together. And then also you can see who is doing the work. I love this feature because we know in a classroom, oftentimes in a group of three, there might be two who are working hard and one that's just kind of coasting. So if you click File and Version History, It'll show you who's done what as far as um, that that goes. This is a path. I'm not going to go through all of this, but just for your reference, if you want a easy story to write and a less complicated slide deck, you would do what I have over here for the lower grades path. It's exactly what you saw on that screenshot from the video. Slide one's the title. Two is the beginning of the story with two path choices which jump to either three or four, where the path keeps on going. Slides five to eight, I have the pattern here. Um, you would have the end at the end of your two stories, and students would just go and do the background and then their hyperlink. So this would be a slide deck of eight. This one, my students during NTI are presently, some of them are on 23 slides. If they've got three in their group, it ends up being 23 in a slide. And um, engagement has been difficult, convincing them that they can do this over the Internet. Uh, but now that they're seeing the final product, they're really excited. So this is what I've done. And I think I've pretty much explained all of that. 
Over NTI, the only difference that I've done is that I've gone ahead and put their finished stories onto the correct slides because that's kind of difficult even in class when I hand them a piece of paper that says these words go on these different slides so that your path goes through on the 24 slides. So I went ahead and put the words onto their slides and then let them know which slides they would be in charge of the words and the pictures and um, making the text look nice. And now I've told them, okay, pretend like you're a businessman or woman and you're gonna be presenting this for your work. Uh, make sure that your presentation looks great. So here is my contact information if you would like more information. And with a couple minutes that I have left, I'm just gonna show you presently what my students are working on. So I wanted to show you right along here some of the comments that I've written. And then my students um, come back here and resolve these. That's the way that I interact with them during NPI to give them instruction on their Google Slides. So this is um, one of the students this semester that they finished up. And let me turn the closed captions on. So this is the joint story. They actually wrote this before we went to NTI. Most of them got to the middle of their story. Um, some of them finished to the end, but some of them have had to do that during NTI. So how does Danny help? This is the middle part of the story. And then he has his two paths. We're going to do Jay gets power. Um, you can see it's not quite polished yet. He still has end two here. And it used to say where the next slide would go to. That was my way to scaffold and help them. That's the other thing you can do with um, choose your own adventure. You can give them story starters and sentence starters if you want to support the writing and they're not quite there yet. So here his story ends, he's got the end right there, and then we go back to where the story starts. So um, that is what my students have been doing and, um, and continuing on with their writing skills uh, during this time of NTI. So I'm gonna pass it back to Jenny. I think that's great, Rosie. I, uh, I was super excited by the soundtrack and I'm like, oh, how's Rosie gonna stand up to this? But you brought the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. And I want to thank Emily and Rosie so much for taking their time to prepare these great ideas to share with you and to do that three times this week. And they both shared with you their contact information. And I know they both of them would be more than happy if you reach out and happy to support you and provide some resources. Their um, slide decks are linked to their names in the, the mid of these. Things, so you can get that there. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Rosie and Emily. We appreciate it.